Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So, sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes 3rd edition, and we're doing problem number 4.3. The problem statement says, A liquid mixture of benzene and toluene contains 55% benzene by mass. The mixture is to be partially evaporated to yield a vapor containing 85% benzene and a residual liquid containing 10.6% benzene by mass. Part A. Suppose the process is to be carried out continuously and at steady state, with a feed rate of 100 kg per hour of the 55% mixture. Let m dot v and m dot l be the mass flow rates of the vapor and liquid product streams respectively. Draw and label a process flowchart, then write and solve balances on the total mass and on benzene to determine the expected values of m dot v and m dot l for each balance state which terms of the general balance equation accumulation equals input plus generation minus output minus consumption you discarded and why you discarded them i have the process detailed out right here and i made it a continuous process for this part and not a batch process but they're the way they have it set up is kind of the same for part B. Um, okay, so we've got our feed coming in, stream one. I put the details here, and then we have stream two, details here, stream three, details here. Okay, so for part A, we have the feed is kilograms per hour. Okay, so we don't have any accumulation because this process is at steady state. Um, we also get rid of generation and consumption because there's no reaction going on. So nothing is being generated or consumed. So all we have is in equals out. All right, so moving on to our balances. First, I'll do the balance on benzene. Okay, so what is the balance on benzene? We've got in minus out. So here's our in stream, and then here's our two outlet streams. I have highlighted the two unknowns of this equation in red. So we have two unknowns in the first balance. But we have two species, so let's do a balance on the second species. We can either do a balance on the second species, or we could do uh, an overall balance. I did a balance on the second species on uh, this part, and then in part B I did a balance on the, the total overall mass balance. Um, I think in the problem statement it says to use the overall mass balance, or the total mass balance. Um, so I, I messed up a little bit on this part and did a balance on the toluene, but really it's, it's the same thing if you, it, you do either one, okay? You can't use all three of them because then one of the balances is not independent of the other balance. So. So even though we have three mass balances we can do, we can only use n minus one of them, okay? Um, so we have two equations and two unknowns, and so it's a system of equations where n equals two. Um, so here I wrote down the, the two matrix setups. Okay, so if you know matrix math, you can follow, um, or you can just plug this into uh, something that can do matrix math, matrix math, like a calculator or Excel or something like that. Um, anyway, M2 equals this, M3 equals this, okay? Part B, now it's a batch process, but it's the same thing. Next, suppose the process to be carried out in a closed container that initially contains 100 kilograms of the liquid mixture. Let MV and ML be the masses of the final vapor and liquid phases, respectively. Draw and label a process flowchart, then write and solve integral balances on total mass and on benzene to determine MV and ML. For each balance, state which terms of the general balance equation. Accumulation equals input plus generation minus output minus consumption. You discard it and why you discarded them. Okay, so same thing here. 
Um, there's no accumulation in the closed system because it's a closed system. So um, there's nothing being added to the system in between steps. So if I just draw a box around the first container, then there's, there's nothing going in or out of the system. And then I separate the vapor out, and now this is its own system, and there's nothing going in or out of the system. It's just closed. Okay, so, um, yeah, no accumulation. Um, the generation and consumption, there's no reaction again, so the products are not being changed at all, just separated. Okay, so we do the exact same balance here, and we get the exact same answer, except for this one was on the total balance as opposed to the, to the toluene balance. Okay, part C. Returning to the continuous process, suppose the evaporator is built and started up and the product stream flow rates and compositions are measured. The measured percentage of benzene in the vapor stream is 85% and the product stream flow rates have the values calculated in part A. But the liquid product stream is found to contain 7% benzene instead of 10.6%. One possible explanation is that a mistake was made in the measurement. Give at least five others. Think about the assumptions you made in obtaining the solution of part A. Okay, so in, in part A, we assume that there was no accumulation, no generation, and no consumption. Um, we also assume that the process was at steady state, uh, that the process was closed, that it was well mixed. Um, so all of these things go into it. So it's we could just say the process is not yet at steady state. You just started it up. Um, so there could be some accumulation inside of the tank. Maybe the tank level is changing or the pressure or temperature, or, you know, any number of those things. Um, the vapor stream is flooding with some of the liquid stream. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the, the vapor stream, sometimes in these separation processes, if they haven't really fully worked out um, to a full steady state system yet, or they have too much flow going into them, um, or it's not hot enough, or you know, a bunch of other problems, factors can go into this, but, but uh, the liquid can end up going out the, the vapor um, end of the separator, and so uh, that's bad for your process, obviously, because you're not separating like you thought. Um, so, so that's where some of the separation of the liquid could go, maybe your more volatile um, product is still liquid, but you have so much flow rate going in that it's going out the wrong end of the separator. So that could be something. Um, we'd say the feed is not at the right composition. Um, so let's say you thought you were starting off with a feed of, of this composition, but in reality it's actually something else. Maybe your feed has been contaminated. Maybe there's a third component in here that's messing with your results or maybe these results are not in the correct ratio, um, or components are not in the correct ratio. Yeah, so something like that. Um, also, the reactor might not be well mixed, right? So you have, you have uh, something in here that's mixing these two things up. So maybe the, the blend of this is, is not being um, well mixed together, and so the even though you have a feed of a, a certain composition, maybe that composition is not realized inside of this reactor. So you have local areas inside of the reactor that are not at this composition because the, the blend is not well mixed. That is it for problem number 4.3. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.